Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7b position, velocity and acceleration practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, leave a like and subscribe, it helps our channel a lot. So let's go ahead and read today's problem. So today's problem is, a San Francisco driver drives most of the way up a hill in order to park his car, but forgets to put in the park, so uh, it rolls back downhill before he slams on the brakes. His velocity is graphed before, below. And our instructions are to graph uh, the acceleration and position graphs as best as we can. Assume the car starts at y is equal to zero and the car is facing in the positive y direction. So as you can see, I have everything written down here. So I have this um, graph that was given to us and I have the exact thick marks here than um, the ones the problem had. So let's just go ahead and analyze this. So we were given the velocity um, graph, which is quote unquote the middle graph, and we have to uh, figure out the acceleration graph and also the position graph. So <coughs> because we were given the velocity graph, which is the middle point between this and this one, you could really start by doing whichever um, you want and it's totally fine. I'm just going to go ahead and start with the acceleration because to me at least that's the one that's the easiest one so let's just go ahead and get it out of the way. So this problem I think it's very clear that you can divide it into several chunks over here. So we can divide it into this part, this so this part, then this part, and then this part going up, and then it just goes to, then just stays at zero, I guess. All right, we can just create an, another part, I guess. There we go. So we can divide it into several parts, one, two, three, four. And um, all right, so let's see. Acceleration is the slope of velocity, and the slope is equal to a change in height divided by a change in x. So for this first part, uh, we're moving two spaces on x, but we are not moving in y. That puts a zero over here, so the slope is equal to zero. And for the first two tick marks, our acceleration is going to be equal to zero. Two tick marks. There we go. Now for this part right here, so let's see. My slope is equal, my um, x slope is equal to one, two, three, four, five. So it's equal to five. And I moved, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, negative six. So uh, that would be a slope of um, negative six over five negative 1.2, so just something for the next five, one, two, three, four, five. So just something over here, there we go, like this. Now for this part right here, I've moved one space on X and I went one, two, three spaces up. So that is positive three, so that would be one, two, three, so over here. And then for this little part right here, uh, this line doesn't have a slope, so this is a zero over here. And there we go. So that finishes uh, the acceleration part of this problem. So let's just go ahead and look at this y, um, the y graph. So let's see, for position, we need to do the opposite of derivating. We need to figure out well, if this is a derivative, then what's the um, antiderivative? What is the integral of that? And we know, um, you know, just from our going to lecture in class, that a line with no slope is going to generate, um, on the velocity graph, is going to generate a position graph that is just a slope line. So for these first two thick marks, we just need a, a straight line and this slope is going to be positive because this is on the positive side. If this straight line were over here, then your, uh, your slope would be negative, but the slope has to be positive because this is on the positive side of the velocity graph. 
Now, I don't really have a scale right here. I just have tick marks. That is why the instruction said that we were just working, you know, uh, in very qualitative terms. So I'm just gonna start by just using a, um, you know, just a straight line over here. Like this. Again, there's no scale, there's no numbers, but a straight line for this problem would obviously be okay. Now, the second part of this problem is a line that has a slope. And we know that if your velocity is a line that has a slope, your position is going to be a parabola. The thing that we have to figure out is uh, whether we're going to have a parabola that is going up, uh, concave up, I'm sorry, or a parabola that is concave down. In this case, this slope is negative because the slope is negative, our parabola is going to be concave down. Now, as we can see over here, there is a point in which we are not moving. Um, and that is the point in which our parabola should be at its, uh, in this case, it's at its highest because it's concave uh, down. So we need a parabola over here that is concave down and that it reaches the top of the parabola over here exactly at the point where the velocity is equal to zero. So let's just go ahead and sketch that. All right, that's not so ugly. We can work with this. There we go. Something like this. And it makes sense because this part over here is on the positive side, which means that your graph should be moving up. This part right here is on the negative side, which means that this part should be going down, which it is going down. This part right here is not moving. We're not, um, we're not moving up or down in here. So we're good to go. So now for this last part over here, we have another slope line, which means that we're going to have a little bit of a parabola over here for this tick mark. Now this parabola, first of all, it needs to be going down. So we can not put something going up over here because it's on the negative side. So it needs to be going down somehow. And we still have two options, right? Because even if we know that it's not going to be moving up, it has to be moving down like this or like this. Uh, we still don't know if the parabola is concave up, which means that it would look something like this, or if it is concave down, which means that it would look something like this. So how do we figure this out? Well, again, um, this slope over here is positive and a positive slope means a concave up parabola. So let me just go ahead and put a concave up parabola. There we go over here. And I know that this has to be the uh, lowest part of a parabola because I'm crossing zero over here. So that is how I know how to draw this part. And now our velocity is equal to zero over here. So that means that whatever our final position is, we're just going to stay here. Again, this is not, um, we don't really have any numbers. Maybe our parabola could have been you know, an alternative would be if you just draw it all the way over here and then just keep it at zero. That's totally fine. We don't really have any numbers to work with. But the only thing that is important is that this is a parabola that is concave up. This is a parabola that is concave down. This is a straight line. And this little chunk right here is just a straight line. So if you had all of the correct elements, it doesn't really matter well, you do need to have them all on the positive side. Uh, it doesn't really matter, you know, how moved this is. Uh, it's still going to be right if it has all of the correct elements, which again, slope going up, parabola, concave uh, down, parabola, concave up, and then a straight line. Uh, so this basically solves the problem. We have everything that the problem asked. If you found this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It does help this channel a lot. And I'll see you guys in the next video.